over one. We only have two more order halls to go. It only took about six months to get it all done. And the story of the Hunter order hall campaign that takes us back to the time where Daladan was teleported to the Broken Isles to take the battle to the Legion. Snowfeather swoops down with a message for us, a request from Amarel Shade Warden to meet her at Hunter's Reach. Ah, Snowfeather delivered my message. Good. We have need of you. Pleasantries will have to wait, as Emmerdale immediately sends us away to pick up an artifact of legends to wield in this war against the Legion. Upon completing our mission, we return to her and she tells us that she observed our skills for some time and that their order has been on the lookout for hunters who could lead the unseen path into a new era. No one is more qualified for that role than we are, so she tells us the tale of the unseen path. Our duty is to all of Azeroth. Please walk with me, Hunter. The Unseen Path was founded after the War of the Ancients to safeguard the people of Azeroth. From these broken isles, we watched for the Legion's return. As we arrived here to build the True Shot Lodge, the Eagle Spirit, Onara, appeared and gave her blessing. From that day forth, we called this mountain Talon Peak. Over the centuries, most of my fellow Watchers have been lost. The few of us remaining sought out heroes worthy to heed the call when the Unseen Path was needed once again. The Silver Covenant stands with you. The Farstriders vow to fight at your side. The Unseen Path is reborn. Assembled before us are many of the world's greatest archers, rangers, beastmasters and trappers, ready to fight the Legion as one. It is time to take a first step in becoming a true leader by swearing our oaths of service before the statue of Onara. We are the Watchers in the Wild. We are the Eagle on the Wind. We walk the Lonely Road. For ours is the unseen path. Up in the sky, behold, Onara! The spirit of the eagle has returned. It's so beautiful. So the Unseen Path, that organization consisting of archers, rangers, beastmasters, hunters and trappers, that for millennia, considering that the War of the Ancients, that was over 10,000 years ago, they've kept the world safe while being unseen. Emmerel, for example, she served the Order's founder, Namuria Gladesong, acting as her eyes and ears when she was needed elsewhere, and she stood with Talana's Windrunner, first Ranger General Silvermoon, during an Amani troll incursion. When the elves who founded the Unseen Path, when they left Mount Hyjal to return to the Broken Isles, the High Mountain Torren, they recognized the nobility of their cause, and they offered them friendship. It was the descendants of Halln High Mountain, the one with the Hammer of Kaskarov, the banished Deathwing, who led the Unseen Path to this peak. Onara is a wild god, once saved from an attack by a chieftain of the High Mountain tribe who wielded a spear. In thanks, she blessed his spear, which later would be known as the Eagle Spear or Talonclaw, the hunter artifact. And when the Night Elves of the Unseen Path were led up the slopes of a nearby mountain by the High Mountain Torren, Talonclaw began to glow. They realized that the mountain was blessed by Onara, and so it was renamed to Talon Peak in honor of the Eagle Spirit. With the Unseen Path, they built Trushot Lodge upon its slopes. Here we see a lot of different hunters and trackers gathered. Specifically, the Elves are represented with the Night Elf Sentinels, the Blood Elf Farce Riders, the High Elf Rangers of the Silver Covenant, and the Dark Rangers of the Forsaken. There are more races here, of course, like Slurgle, Stabby Gurzel, a Murloc being trained by Tolvir, but it would take too much time to cover each and every one of them. One that I do like to point out is Tita van Kortz, which is a character designed specifically for the novel Shadows of the Hordes. He became very close with Vol'jin in that storyline, he even showed up during his funeral. And when we talk to him, he tells us that the legends of the Unseen Path, they were what pushed him into becoming a hunter to begin with. When he heard that the order had been restored, he had to see it with his own eyes. We ask him if something is troubling him, and he lets us know that he's thinking of lost friends, of Vol'jin, and a promise he needs to keep. 
They swore to each other that if one of them was killed, the other would avenge them. The Legion took Volden away, so let's see if we can help him with that promise. We speak with Tactician Tinderfell to pick our first point of assault. We gather some experience and allies, we kick some demon booty, until we're summoned back to the Lodge. As leader of the Order, other hunters will look to us for guidance, and many will be willing to pledge themselves to the cause, doing whatever is necessary in the name of the Unseen Path. Our first two champions, that are Emmerel Shadewarden and Lauren Stormhoof, are Skyhorn Emissary, whose ancestors were the ones who welcomed Amuria and her huntress to their land, and together they helped build the lodge that we stand in today. As with those that came before me, I pledge my service to you and the Unseen Path. I pledge my loyalty to you and to the Unseen Path for all my days. With our champions recruited, we send them out to save Lenora, who was on her way to True Shot Lodge when she was attacked. She allows us to recruit squads of archers, who can accompany our champions on their mission, the next one pointing them towards the hostile Fell Totem, who've been busy kidnapping our allies. Survivalist Ban is saved, who spent his younger years living off the land in Pandaria, relying on the native flora and fauna to survive. His first-hand experience with building from limited resources that will surely give him some ideas on how to upgrade our Order Hall. After that, we send our champions out to talk with our scouts in the field and get information on who needs our help. Their report, it points us towards a village in Valjera that's being attacked by undead hounds. This is the perfect opportunity for the Unseen Path to make good on our promise to help those in need, so we fly out to Bradensbrook and we talk with Hudson Crawford. Their village is swarming with beasts risen from the dead. They attack night and day, and the villagers are doing their best to keep them at bay, but it's getting to be more than the townsfolk can handle. We're here to lend a hand, so we take care of the risen hounds, while also trapping Captain Tavares, who has been sneaking around in the shadows. He won't be able to sneak out of our trap, and with him gone, the children of the village, they will finally be able to sleep better at night, knowing that those assassins, that there aren't lurking just outside their door. Snowfeather once again swoops in with an important message. Our scouts, they have returned with reports from all over Azeroth. It seems that things are much worse than initially seemed, and with so many in need of our help, it may be time to call in some of our scouts in the field. One of them is Hilaire. Despite abandoning her clan long ago to join our order, she still feels a need to watch over them. Her dedication to protect those who would shun her is admirable, but we need her here, so we seek out the Beastmaster in Stormheim to let her know that it's time to come home. Her post has been a quiet one over the years, without much to act on, yet she's unwilling to come with us, since her Beast Cora that has been captured by a group of mages from the Kirin Tor. They claim that she is responsible for the death of one of their own, but Hilaire refuses to believe that. Cora is a very loyal and obedient companion who would never attack without her commands. The true enemy behind the attack, that's a demon who she's been tracking, but they put up a quite a fight before getting away. Her injuries prevent her from giving chase, so it's up to us to follow the blood trail into Felskill Cavern, find the Felhound Zoark, and bring his head to Archmage Landon to prove that Cora is innocent. The Felhound is quite unique as it has an extra set of razor sharp teeth. Not surprising considering that this is a me and Avakar the Houndmaster, so Landon apologized for the mix up and they set Korra free. If you are leading the order in its efforts to help those in need, then I offer myself to aid in any way I can. Come on Korra, it is time to go home. She has seen the clans abandon their traditions in favor of following God King Skovald, a king who chose to side with the Legion. The people that she sought to protect, allied with her enemy, she will not let others find a similar fate. To do the most good in the world, we need the best hunters at our side, and Rexar, he is the reputation of being one of the greatest hunters of his time. The Magnaval, a child from a union between orcs and ogres, he joined the horde way back when, but he was disgusted about all the things that had happened, all the betrayals from within, and he decided to retreat into Azra's wilds and wander the world in solitude. Fade, however, that had other plans in mind, as during Warcraft 3, he met up with Thrall and his new horde, he even became their champion, and he helped out with the founding of Durotar and taking care of Admiral Dalen Proudmoor. Thrall even offered him a home in Durotar, but Rexar belongs in the wilds, he will always be part of the horde though, and he will always be there when they need him. We find him camping at Cliff's Edge in High Mountain, and Rexar, he does respect our order, yet he also finds it a bit dull. The life of a hunter should never be dull, living in the wilds, you never never know what will happen next, but you survive on skill and instinct. We show the Magnafal that we are anything but dull, that we can easily survive a night with him partying in the wilds by collecting some raw 
our meat from the spine tails piglets. We chop some woods from the dying trees. We make our own campfire and we cook the meat just right to survive the long night. We have his attention. Not many hunters have what it takes to survive a night in these unforgiving mountains. And he will stand beside us, sending a message that we can endure, even in the face of an enemy as great as the Burning Legion. You have a natural instinct for survival. One that will only be strengthened in troubled times like these. We let Emmerdale know that we succeeded in bolstering our ranks, but as we do, Sentry Pierce runs in with some very dire news. Emmerdale, Commander! Have you seen it? Look to the sky! It's happening above the lodge! Calm down, Pierce. What are you talking about? The emergency signal flares! They're being fired above the lodge! Look for yourself! It can't be. Those flares haven't been used in hundreds of years. Long ago, a few selected leaders, they were given special flares that were only to be used in times of great need. Upon seeing the flare, the leader of the Unseen Path, they're supposed to head to the Southern Watchtower to meet with whomever lit it to find out what is going on. May your weapons strike. Let's make our way to the Watchtower. Archmage, we saw your flares. Please let us know how we can help. Thank you for letting me be a guest in your hall. I wish we were meeting under better circumstances. So it's Ketgar who has the flares, so I imagine that they were passed down from leader to leader of the Kidentor. Either way, the Archmage fears that the Legion is planning to invade Dalaran, to which he has sent out a few of his members to spy on Demon Strongholds to uncover any plots involving the city. In the meantime, Dalaran could use the protection from the Unseen Path. There is Thank much you, to be warriors. done. The Unseen Path will help, however we can. You have my thanks. It's our champions that get the honor of defending Dalaran, discreetly of course. We're also taking care of Infernals that have crashed upon the shores of Surumar. They take out an Imp Mother that's breeding a Bradensbrook, and they protect the infantry that's holding off a Legion invasion on the eastern coast of Stormheim. Meanwhile, our Skyhorn allies could also use some assistance, as their ongoing war with the invading Harpies has left them low on supplies. We bring either Big Gamey Rips, High Mountain Salmon or Silk Weave Bandages to Malaya Greyfeather to make sure that our allies can keep up the fight. While all of that is going on, we also have Recruiter Samson, an extraordinary tracker who's made his way to his lodge and he will allow us to recruit bands of trackers. So all in all, the Unseen Path is quite busy all over the Broken Isles and it could use some extra firepower. After completing his questline within High Mountain, we're able to recruit the famed Hammond Nesting Wary, the finest hunter in all of Azeroth to our cause. With him comes Eddie Fizzlebog, a newly trained gnome hunter, who believes that there's more to hunting than just taking down big game. Stick with us and we'll be able to teach you exactly what it means to be a hunter. I don't think Hammett himself could have taught me better. I'm happy to hunt with you anytime. The mages the Kekker send out to investigate the Legion camps, they have failed to report back and now he needs our help in tracking them down. We'll need to find ourselves a reliable hound capable of following a scent. And if it's a hound that we need, then only one name springs to mind. Old Baron, Huntsman Blake's old companion, has to be called back into the service of the world. You hear that boy? They traveled all this way just to see you. Baron is quite old, some even told Blake to put him down, but he can't bear the thought of losing his loyal friends. Maybe if we let him wander through the fields and dig up some of the old bones, perhaps it will be enough to awaken his senses. We take the old pup with us as he sniffs out, sometimes indeed a pair of the ancient bones, but sometimes he also finds some withering bones that don't like to be disturbed. Being back in action like that, it fills the dog with energy. You might remember Huntsman Blake if you ever made a worgen, since he was there in Gilneas to teach you how to play. While well, he also made an appearance in Pandaria during the Operation Shieldwall questline, where he offered daily hunting quests to take down some of the mightiest beasts in the area. You've made a friend of Baron, and in that, you've also made a friend of me. The Hound is ready to get to work, and Ketgar, he's already made his way to Sudamar, where the missing mages were last seen. There isn't much evidence to go on, other than a torn piece of cloth, which looks to be from one of our tabards. The scrap may be small, but it should be heavy with the essence of magic. We can only hope the Baron can catch the scent and track down the mages. Until we meet oh, again. Let's see how well that nose of yours works. Atta boy. Now let's go find those mages. We follow Baron for a bit. We take care of any threats that might distract him until we find our missing mages. Up ahead, I see the mages. They're surrounded by the Houndmaster's minions. Quickly, we must slaughter these beasts before they do more harm. You will 
not interfere with their feeding! My hounds are hungry, and your mages make quite a meal. Soon they will be strong enough to draw the magic out of every mage in Dalaran! You won't get away with this, Hakkar! Come, my pets. You will have plenty to feed on soon enough. My minions look forward to making a meal out of you, Archmage. Until we meet again. Houndmaster Hakkar has made his appearance, and isn't he beautiful? The standard model, it really does not justice. We already knew that Hakkar had returned to Azeroth as he showed up during the assault on the Broker Shore. But back then, I still had the hope that it was just a placeholder model and that he would be upgraded later down the line. I guess that that's not the case and it's a bit disappointing since he was quite a badass during the War of the Ancients trilogy. This is 10,000 years ago, Xavius and the Highborn, they had made contact with Sargeras who then sent them Hakkar to guide them, to help them strengthen their portal to let Sargeras pass. He wore body armor of molten steel, and his huge gauntlet hand, he wielded a whip that flashed lightning whenever used. His chest and shoulders, so much wider than the rest of his torso, dwarfed those of even the mightiest warrior. Whenever the armor did not hide his form, pure flame radiated from his skilled, fleshless and unearthly body. Set deep in the broad shoulders, the flaming visage peered down at the night elves. They that most resembled a brooding skull with huge curled horns, it did nothing to dissuade the highborn that here was a heavenly messenger sent to aid them in their dream of a perfect paradise. No, that I am the servant of your god, he hissed, the flames that were his eyes flaming hot whenever he spoke. Come to help you open the way for his host and his most glorious self. One of the beasts howled, but a snap of the whip sent lightning crackling over the creature, instantly silencing it. I am the Houndmaster. The massive skeletal knight continued, fiery gaze fixing most upon the kneeling counselor. I am Hakkar. The Houndmaster had control over his fell hounds, and during this war, a resistance was formed. Through on the Whisperwind, she was nearly killed by Hakkar, but Melfurion, he could not let his love be hurt like that, and he would not stand for Hakkar taking her down. Melfurion's gaze twisted to the heavens. The cloud cover offered him his best hope, and the Houndmaster, ironically, had aided in that choice. The wind assisted him at first, stirring the clouds to motion. They disliked being so disturbed, and in their anger, quickly grew black. Although it went against his nature, Malfurion fed their rage, then played on their vanity. There was one here who commanded lightning of his own and flaunted it. Hakkar took his stillness for surrender. Eyes blazing, the Houndmaster pulled his arm back. One more stroke, I think. One more stroke. The clouds rumbled, shook, lightning shot down, not one, but two bolts that hit the huge demon dead on. Hakkar let out a roar of pain that made every bone in Malfurion's body shiver. The Houndmaster stood bathed in brilliant light, his arms outstretched as if he sought to embrace that which destroyed him. The whip, already burned black, fell from his trembling grasp. All around the scene of the battle, the fell beasts abruptly paused in their struggles and howled mournfully. At last, the heavenly illumination faded away, and the ashy corpse of the demon lord dropped limply to the grass. That is how Hakkar came to an end during the War of the Ancients, but of course, being a demon and all that, it meant that he could come back, and now he has come back. As long as he remains within Azeroth, no mage will be safe, and considering that he and his hounds are immune to most spells, can actually feed on magical essence, Khadgar needs the help of the Unseen Paw. That is our mission now, and first we need to find out more about the hounds that he's breeding and pinpoint their weaknesses. We meet up with Kira Irisol, a warlock that actually joins the warlocks as one of the champions. We collect some layworm entrails to become a nice juicy magical bait, and with it we travel deep into the heart of Ferranar, where the dens are overrun with fell hounds. If Akar is breeding those beasts, that is the place where he would do it. We lure a fell hound fledgling, we weaken it, and then we take it captive. See you Give later. Give me a moment to inspect this beast and I can discover its weaknesses. These scales are unlike anything I've seen. This demon has clearly been bred to be resistant to both magical and physical attacks. 
it is in their nature to be immune to magic, but these have also been bred to be resistant to physical attacks. Unless we equip our army with legendary weapons like we have, we might need to find something that will exploit their weakness. Unsettling news indeed. If our weapons won't work against Takar's minions, then how are we going to defeat him? We should call in our allies and see what they can do to help. Most have answered our call already, but Chandra's Feramoon, she's stuck in battle with the Naga. We send our champions out to help her, which completes collecting our allies, and most of them, they do have some plan in mind to take Akar down. If we wish to defeat the Houndmaster, we'll need to lure him to a location of our choosing. Similar to how we trapped the Fellhound Fletchling, we're going to lure Hakar with magic. Maleficent Manastorm, prisoner within the Violet Hold and wife of Milhouse Manastorm, she once created a vessel that siphons the essence of her mage, binding their magic to the objects. If we channel Katkar's essence into this vessel, it will become an object of pure magic. Only problem is that when they captured Maleficent, she was able to shatter the vessel and its pieces ended up in the hands of her enemies. A perfect job for our champions as they travel across the Broken Isles to take care of these enemies and collect the missing shards of the vessel. Baladash, If the plan is to set a trap for the Houndmaster, we'll need to place it in a secure location. I can get us access to the Violet Hold, where we'll be able to fight Hakar without worry of any collateral damage. Verissa, Ranger General of the Silver Covenant and wife of the deceased Ronin, she doesn't offer us a quest, but can get us access into the Violet Holds. Why Ketgar can't do this, I have no idea. I guess they just wanted to give her a role to play. But the Far Striders will fight at your side and help bring the Houndmaster to his knees. Haldron Brightwing, Ranger General of Silvermoon, he focuses on getting us the weapons that we need. They have Blacksmith Kiriel, who has forged countless arrows for the Far Striders in the past, using his knowledge of unique materials to help build better and stronger ammo. All we need to do is getting some materials to work with, Azure Ore that can be found in the waters of the coast of Sudamar, and Nightmare Oak collected from the dead body of Oakheart within Darkheart thickets. Haldron told me to expect you. You must have gone through some trouble to get your hands on this oak and ore. These are tricky materials to work with, but I think you'll be impressed with the final product. The weapons I'm crafting should be sharp enough to pierce through any armor, and sturdy enough for repeated use. I have to say, I think this might be my finest work yet. Don't let that weaponry fall into the wrong hands. Kiriel did some fine work, but they are going to need a little bit extra. That is where Chandris comes in. Um. The Sentinels stand ready to assist. Together, we will take down the Houndmaster. Chandris Feramoon, general of the Night Elf Sentinels and adopted daughter of Toronto and Malfurion. She has seen the worst that the Legion had to offer during the War of the Ancients, where her family was slaughtered. To upgrade our weapons, we'll have to enchant them, and the Sentinels they know of a trusted and talented one who specializes in enchantments that affect demons. All we need to do is collect some reagents, 20 arcana, and find her at Moonclaw Vale in Valshera. Demons will be drawn to the power I'll call upon to enchant your weapons. The materials used are extremely volatile. An interruption of any kind could prove disastrous. This area has been overrun by demons, but Liana refuses to abandon her home. The strength and stubbornness that she exhibits in the face of an enemy, they are also traits that shine through in her enchantments. We want our weapons to be as strong and stubborn as she is, so we keep her safe from the waves of demons that try to attack her as she does her work. There, the weapons are finished. I've given them the finest enchantment I can offer. After leading by example and protecting the world by completing 30 world quests, we're ready to set our trap for Hakar within the Violet Holds. My rangers are armed and ready to fight by your side. My archers have their bows loaded, ready to shoot any demons that dare enter these walls. Ishnuala. Gul'dan, I will begin to channel my essence into the arcane vessel. Once the process is complete, a car should be drawn to the vessel's magic. While my essence is contained within the vessel, I will be in a weakened state, unable to assist. Is it working? Has her car taken the bait? Send up a flare and we shall see. Demons are near! Sentinels, ready your blades! Archers, mark your targets! <laughs> So we meet again. <laughs> Your presence was not accounted for. 
But I believe my hounds will enjoy making a meal of you nonetheless. When they are done tearing you apart limb from limb, they will begin their feast on the magical prisoners within these cells. Once sated, my hounds will charge the city, slaughtering everyone in their path. Teleron will fall to the Burning Legion! Akar sends his foe hounds, Krinam and Kazaidim, to fight with us, but they quickly go down as our forces are fighting with a small army of foe hounds to his side. My hounds! You will pay with your life for what you've done! What you don't want to do is actually pull in more of these fell hounds since I got my ass kicked quite a few times during these fights. Hakar uses Crushing Slam, which is easily avoided by moving to the side, and he also caused chaotic fell bursts, but you just have to avoid the greeny swirly things on the ground. As I was checking the recordings, I did notice that there was a hole in the floor of the prison, which I didn't notice during the fights. Now I wonder if that's where you're supposed to pull him into. I asked on stream if people used it, and someone said that it was just a locked door behind it. I didn't check it out for myself though, but but either way, after dancing around with the Houndmaster for a bit, we send them back to the Twisting Nether and let Ketgar know that Daladan will be safe thanks to our heroic actions. There you is... have done what the Kiran Tor could not do for ourselves. The Houndmaster's death will deliver a crushing blow to the Burning Legion's forces. Let us leave this place and celebrate our victory among friends. I hope you shot that demon right between the eyes. May your weapons With strike. Hakar dead, the citizens of Dalaran will be safe. Most will never know the threat they faced, thanks to your heroic actions. You struck the Fell Lord down before he had a chance to terrorize the city. You upheld the oath we all took to watch and protect. It would be naive to assume this is the last threat Azeroth will face. The Burning Legion is at our doorstep, demanding to be reckoned with. In times like these, our oath is more important than ever. We do not fight for glory, for fame, or riches. We exist to protect those who need it most, often without reward or recognition. We are the Watchers in the Wild. We are the Eagle on the Wind. We walk the lonely road. For ours is the Unseen Path. Holder on Brightwing steps up to the plate and he becomes our last champion. Our battle with the Legion, it's only just begun and we can count on the Far Striders to be there when we need them. Undae, although you have walked the lonely road for but a short while, your bond with the ancient weapon you wield grows ever stronger. Through the victories you've achieved and the resources you've gathered, we now have the means to unlock the artifact's full potential. Step before the altar of the Eternal Hunt. Let it infuse your weapon with power and make it mightier than ever before. The Huntmaster! May your aim never falter, and your weapon strike true. And that is the story of the Hunter or the Hall campaign. Now there is one hidden and small additional storyline that you can find there to earn yourself some transmog. But if you're interested in that, I'll link a video made by Hiruma Rex in the description down below, as he explains everything that you need to do to get that questline done. I personally thought that this Order Hall campaign, it, it was alright. It was nice to see different elves and races coming together to take on Hakar. But I really do think that they should have invested just a little bit more time in giving the demon his own unique model and abilities. It was fine when he just showed up during the assault, but he does play a very big role in this campaign. Would have been worth it. But hey, what can you do? As always, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching everyone. Subscribe if you like my videos. Leave a like if you enjoyed this one. 
And until next time, guys. See ya!